Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video on Unity Catalog, we are going to see what exactly is Unity Catalog, what are the different features of Unity Catalog and how we can leverage Unity Catalog to provide the business solutions. So in this video, we are going to cover all of these features as well as I'm also going to show you, you know, how does Unity Catalog actually looks like when implemented on the Databricks workspace. But this is mostly an introductory video on the Unity Catalog. As we move forward, I would need around three videos to completely cover this topic from the hands-on perspective, you know, setting up the Unity Catalog in the workspace, you know, and seeing how we can leverage all its features. So let's move ahead and see exactly what is a Unity Catalog. So when you talk about UC, it is nothing but it is a data governance solution. You have the data on the lake house. You need a solution to govern the data, right? Let's say you have a database, you have some specific set of tables. And if you want to provide specific set of permissions to, to a group of users on a particular table, right? or even at the row level or even at the column level, Unity Catalog can help you simplify that particular solution, right? It helps you simplify the security. It helps you simplify the governance of your data because it provides a centralized place, right? Where you can keep your data and you can audit the data access. So that this is basically the major uh, you know, feature of the Unity Catalog. Of course, Unity Catalog serves other, uh, you know, it, it has other features as well, but this is the major feature. This is the main feature of Unity Catalog to provide, you know, security as well as governance to your data at a centralized place where you can administer the access to your data, you know, you and you can even audit the data access. This is basically a premium offering and it is available across multiple clouds. It is available on Azure, it is available on GCP, it is available on uh, Amazon as well. It is a unified catalog in the sense that you can store all your data, your ML models, your artifacts, all can be stored inside the Unity catalog. And, uh, you know, everything becomes an object inside that particular catalog. Now, you, then once it is an object, you can actually provide selective access to that particular object. Let's say you have been working on the Databricks workspace earlier and you have a lot of your tables inside the Hive Meta Store, right? Now, even for that matter, you can actually use Unity Catalog and leverage the Unity Catalog even for the tables which are existing in the Hive Meta Store. You have to bring those tables to the Unity Catalog. We will see that part as well. Now, similarly, if you want to mask any PII information, you can do that. If you want to mask, let's say, a particular column which you have, which have PII information, you can do that. If you want to provide selective access to the number of columns to a user, you can do that. So that is what is called as unified data access controls, which is provided by Unity Catalog. Similarly, you can also see the data lineage. So when I say data lineage, let's say you have a, a table of, you know, a specific column, which is derived from five other tables, you know, using some kind of transformations. So that lineage you can visualize in the Unity catalog as well. You can you can have end to end visibility on how your data flows from the lake house to the consumption layer as well. Now, similarly, you also have something called as data sharing. So even if you have some set of particular tables which you want to share, you know, across, across different platforms, across different clouds, you can do that using the Delta sharing option in the Databricks. So these were, uh, you know, the few features of the UC. Now let's move ahead and I will actually show you how workspace with the UC enabled looks like. So now if you see over here, right now, this workspace is actually a UC enabled workspace. So when you look over here, you have something called as catalog right now inside this catalog. If you can see over here, I have something called a schema and I have something called as tables. So these tables are nothing, but these are UC enabled tables. These tables are present with 
unity catalog enablement now the theory behind it all of this i'll come back to this again later but these pretty much looks like the same as your existing hive meta store tables so now let me move ahead and i'll show you what is the basic architecture of a unity catalog so if you look at this particular slide right i have taken this from the databricks documentation and it was pretty blur so if you see unity catalog over here right Unity catalog can link to your multiple Databricks workspaces. So if you can see there is a workspace over here and there is a Databricks workspace over here. Now if you have and, that, and then when you talk about Unity catalog you have a meta store and the user management over here. Now what does this mean? Now meta store is a place where you can store your you know your objects, your schemas and the information about your objects you can store that in up in a meta store right now similar to your hive meta store this unity catalog also works on the meta store so you have to create that meta store manually for the unity catalog to work because of this meta store unity catalog basically has a centralized metadata layer and this can be shared across multiple workspaces now basically unity catalog what will what it will do is it will capture you know your audit logs it will capture your data lineage everything about the data will be captured within the unity catalog now using the user management right what will happen is if you have a specific set of a user if you have specific set of groups even the service principle for that matter they will live inside your unity catalog right what will happen is if you have even the you know if you have users or groups from your azure active directory you can actually import it to the unity catalog and unity catalog will manage the users over here so that is why you see two options over here user management and the meta store meta store will capture all the metadata about your objects and the user management will make sure that uh, you know it will try to capture your groups the users the accesses that they have so whenever a group or a user or a service principal tries to access any particular table inside your Databricks workspace, what will happen is Databricks workspace will talk back to the Unity catalog. It will check over here whether that particular user has the access to that particular object or not. Right. First, it will do that verification and after that only, only after that particular authorization right you the user will be able to view that particular table column or even the row in the workspace so this is how unity catalog actually works now now this is also a very good diagrammatic representation of the unity catalog you can see on the left hand side you have users who try to access manage tables external tables or even the files in the cloud storage using the unity catalog over here right they 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 try to access these tables using the clusters and this cluster is nothing but these are the clusters which have the uc enabled right which are there in a workspace where the unity catalog is already enabled so they try to access it now when they try to access it you have unity catalog in place over here which is nothing but the access control the moment a, a user tries to access a particular table using a particular sql endpoint or a cluster it talks your workspace will go ahead your databricks workspace will go ahead and it will talk to the unity catalog try to do the authorization for that particular user whether that user have access to that table or not and these tables can be the managed tables can be your external tables can be you know the cloud files or anything these can be stored uh, you know in your s3 bucket in your adls or the google cloud storage in any of these three clouds so this is a uh, pretty much an overview on the unity catalog now i will try to go one step you know ahead in the unity catalog and now what you see on the screen is the unity catalog object model so basically how does it work so the, at the top you have something called as meta store so whenever you enable Uni unity catalog on the workspace you will always have something that is called as meta store for example this is the catalog that i have created now if i go to the details over here you will see something called as meta store id so there ha there is a meta store that is created on that workspace now this is the meta store id and if you see inside this meta store i have nothing but i have a catalog created right now at the top also you can see the name of the meta store this is nothing but this is the meta store test that is created 
right and if i want to see the details of the meta store you can see that this is the meta store that has been created right it has been created in this particular region and it has been created on a specific storage account right because the meta store is always linked to a storage account okay and the permissions on that particular store uh, on that meta store are also you can view over here but i'll go back for the you know i'll not go here um, right now we'll cover this in the uh, upcoming sessions but if you see this catalog has been created under our meta store now this catalog has something called as schema and the schema has something called as tables right now similarly if i go back to my ppt it shows you pretty much the same thing you have a meta store over here meta store has something called as catalog and catalog has a schema and the schema has tables now tables can be the managed tables external tables you can also create views inside it so if you see i have shown you the hierarchy meta store catalog schema and the table now catalog is something like a database you can think of now if you go back over here this is the catalog you have a schema schema is nothing but it looks like a database uh, sorry i think i said catalog is a database but just just imagine that schema is almost equivalent to a database over here and then you have something called as tables and these are the tables now similarly you can also create views over here not just the tables you have also something called as models now if i go back to the ppt model also resides over here now similarly you can also have functions and you can manage the access to all of this if you want to understand the difference between the managed and the external table i've already created a video on this so maybe you can go ahead and watch that but i hope you're clear with this hierarchy of meta store catalog schema and tables views model and the functions now if you see i have also something called as storage credential external location share recipient and provider so if i go back over here now each of these have a separate meaning a separate use case as well right so if you see i have something called as delta sharing over here right now in the ppt if you share if you see this share recipient and provider these three things right what are these so whenever you have set of tables that you want to share with uh, you know anybody any 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 environment outside data breaks or even within the cloud if you want to share a set of table if you want to share some data you use delta sharing for it now delta sharing if you see there are two options shared by me shared with me what i have shared and what has been shared with me right so if you see new recipient now this is how the recipient comes into picture recipient is something to whom you are sharing the data right now similarly if you want to share the data you can click on the shared data and you you actually put the shared name now what is the share share is nothing but the set of the data or the set of the tables that you want to share now if you go back to the ppt you can see share and recipient both of these two things i have covered by showing you as well how does it look like now similarly you have something called as provider provider is nothing but an object who has actually shared the data right so this is how your delta sharing actually works you can actually share the data as well we will see it in our upcoming uh, videos that how uh, we can actually leverage that now similarly you have something called as external data now you might have data which is present in an external storage location right you might have external tables created where the where the data resides in a separate storage account it might not reside in the same meta store so basically this external location is nothing but if your data resides in a different storage account now pointer to that is nothing but your external location and the storage credential now this data basically we provide it over here and then it is again stored in the unity catalog meta store right now these are nothing but the pointers to the any other storage account where your data might be kept or stored so this is what your external location is about so whenever you are pointing to a data set which is present inside inside another storage account that is where external location comes into a picture we create the location over here we provide you know you can actually see this particular url as well which is the storage account url the storage credentials we provide it over here we provide the location for that particular storage account now storage credentials if you talk about this is nothing but your meta store right this meta store test so whenever this meta store test is created now at that time i have 
added this meta store to a particular storage account now that storage account is nothing but that storage account is the credentials for that storage account is nothing but they are represented with the storage credentials over here so i hope these two points are also clear so now if i go back to this over here you can actually see that there is something called a storage credentials and external location that we have covered so we have pretty much covered all these points over here now uh, you know if you want you can you know maybe pause the video for a moment and read through it this is exactly what we have discussed what is a meta store meta store is a top level container for your metadata so unity catalog is actually created through the meta store so you have to create the meta store and meta store is linked to a storage account because that is where your metadata will reside and then you have the catalog which basically helps you to organize it, uh, organize the data and then you have a schema which is almost equivalent to the database which have set of tables views and functions associated within the within that particular schema and then you have something called as external location basically whenever you have any external storage account which you want to read the data from then you can actually uh, put external location over there storage credential again you have created meta store using a storage account so credential for that is nothing but the storage credential similarly you have registered model so whenever you have a ml flow registered model you can keep it inside so that is kept under registered model uh, and similarly share recipient and provider these come into picture whenever you are trying to share the data so now if i again go back you have all the things present here that is what we have discussed now similarly again you know we will see how to set this up in our upcoming videos but just to give you an overview you can actually see that most of the things you can actually do through the ui you can click on this create schema create a new schema and let's go inside a particular schema if you can see over here in the tables these are the tables that have been created now let me click on one particular table let's say the dinner table right now again if i go ahead if i want to query this particular table i can query this particular table and also if i want to view the data you know the permissions associated to that particular table if i have given it to a particular group so all that comes over here similarly the lineage that i was talking about as one of the features of the uc you can actually see that lineage comes over here right the table the notebook through through which that particular table was created the workflow if there was any workflow that was created or the pipeline now if you click on the c lineage graph you can actually see the lineage that okay this was created from this right so your dinner price then your dinner dinner table was actually used in the creation of the dinner price it actually gives you very columnar level details as well we will see that later on but yeah so this is pretty much uh, if you can see i am trying to you know show you through ui how you can actually do it now similarly if you want to grant any permissions you can do it through ui as well as you can do it through sql uh, you know if you want to create a catalog if you want to create a schema if you want to create a table if you want to grant access to the table you can do it both through the ui as well as through the basic sql commands so if you you can actually see if i want to grant the permission i can click on the grant and i can you know uh, assign the permissions now these permissions have a set specific hierarchy you know we will talk about it because it is a detailed discussion again but still i'm trying to give you as much information as i can give in this video so if you feel i'm talking fast you can actually watch my video on 0.75x and i hope you don't you guys don't mind that now similarly you know again uh, you can see over here catalog schema dinner right so this is a dinner table that has been created and if i go to the details it is a managed table the storage location where it is created what are the properties when it was created it was created you know whatever the date it was created so things like that you can actually see it through the ui as well as you can use the basic sql command of just describe extended that particular table name right we are going to see this i hope you like this video and you know thank you so much for being till here and do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the upcoming videos as well so thank you so much guys thank you so much